Hello, my name is Alex and in this video we're gonna be discussing the basics of Signals. Now, Signals are basically a state management tool which allows you to monitor the states of certain values. You can then react to those values changing while also allowing your application to re-render components more efficiently. Now, to give you a quick example, here we have two inputs. One is the name and the second one is the age. And as we change the name to something else, like John Doe, as you can see, we trigger an output here, and every time we trigger that output, we can see the name changing. Furthermore, if we change the age, the age changes as well, and then an additional value here, which is the age in dog years, is recalculated. Now, you can imagine signals like wrappers. They wrap around your values, and then... Once the content of those wrappers change, so basically when your values change, the wrapper outputs a signal to all of its consumers letting them know that something has changed. This essentially means that anytime you change the value within a signal, it is alerting all of its consumers of those changes. This makes re-rendering components and reacting to changes incredibly efficient. So basically, Angular doesn't need to manually look for changes in your components and instead, signals are a way to alert Angular of those changes automatically. This helps with the rendering speed of your application and it allows for more reactive programming. Now, another nice thing about signals is that you can instantly react to those changes and prompt other signals to be recalculated. So in this example, we have the age in dog years, which is automatically recalculated the same instant as we change our age. So basically, the signal here, which is responsible for this value, knows that any time we change our age here, which is another signal, that it should recalculate the age in dog years. So the entire idea of signals is that you have a state management mechanism which wraps around values and alerts its consumers of any changes. So without further ado, let's jump straight into signals. So now having that said, let's go ahead and let's pull up an example here. So basically this is our application and this here is the corresponding code. So let's go ahead and let's try to make sense of it. So basically here we have a very simple Angular project. So basically this is a boilerplate project with, with a single component and a single module, which is our app component and app module respectively. Now the only changes done to this uh, project is that we've actually imported the forms module here into our imports. And then we've created our HTML here, which consists of two fields and a single button. And then we also have custom CSS in our app component.css file. And we also have custom CSS in our styles.scss file as well. So basically, these are all of the changes made to the boilerplate uh, project here. And besides that, we're going to be mainly working with our app component here to demonstrate how signals work. Now, to begin with, here we have an empty constructor, which we're going to use in a second. And then I've declared two signals here, which are of type writable signal, which is important. And the first one is essentially an instance of signal. So I'm importing it up here. And the value here is John. The second one is also an instance of a writable signal. So this is our name and this is our age here. And the value is 30. And I also have this function down here, which is used to reset the age back to 30. Now, how does all of this work? First of all, when you declare a signal, you usually declare it as a writable signal if you want to specify the type. Then, inside here, you would need to specify the exact type of the uh, value inside of your signal. So in this case, this is a string, and in this case, this is a number. Now, signals can be far more complex, and you ha can have arrays or even objects inside of your signals, but you would need to specify the corresponding value 
to satisfy the requirements of TypeScript. Now moving on, after you've declared your signal, you can either set your signal to something else, like so. You can read your signal, so we could do console.log, and then we can actually say this dot age and instead of saying set or get or anything similar we can just use a set of parentheses here and this will essentially output the value of my signal so basically to set a signal we use dot set and then to get the value of the signal we can just say this dot and then the name of the signal followed by a set of parentheses if I remove this, this will not work. So let's go ahead and let's run it as is. So let's go back into our project. And in here, I will just click on reset age. And as you can see, this works. Now, if we go back in here, and if I remove this parenthesis, we can actually save this. Again, we can go back and we can click on reset age. And as you can see, this outputs a method instead of outputting the value. However, here, this is how we're essentially getting our value behind the scenes. But for the scope of this video, we're going to skip over this part. So again, if you don't include the parenthesis, this will actually return the getter method instead of returning the value. And now if we go back here and if we bring the parenthesis back, as you can see, everything works as it should. So basically, this is how we get this value. Now, besides getting the value, we can also say update to update the existing value. And then we can say value to get the existing value. And then we can pretty much uh, append the value or change the value in any way we want. So now we can save that. Now we can go back into our project here. And now if I click on reset age, it doesn't reset the age, but it essentially increments the age instead. So basically, you can uh, use update instead of set to directly access the current value and update it. Now, obviously, we could do something like this instead. So instead of saying update, we could just say this dot age, and then we could just get the value of age. And then we could increment it by one. And this would also work as you can see here. So this works pretty much flawlessly. But to be honest, this is not a very straightforward way of doing this operation. And using update instead is way more straightforward. Now having that said, let's remove the console log from here. And let's save. And now let's go into the HTML document. Now, one way we can do with uh, signals as well is directly binding them to ng models. Now, for some reason, people don't really bridge this topic, but obviously you can bind a signal to an ng model and it is supported. So this is done by simply providing the name of the signal inside of your ng model. And you don't want to use your parentheses here. This is invalid. So you just provide the name of the signal instead and this will work and this will effectively bind your signal to your ng model property and this is how we can essentially update this input which will in turn cause the signal to update and vice versa so essentially if i modify this and then click on reset age as you can see everything works as expected now, next up, we need a way to detect changes in our name and age signals. So basically, in this case, we have two values and we have two signals wrapping those values. And whenever those values change, we need a way to detect those changes and react to them. So let's say we want to console log any changes in the name and age. Now, to do that, we would need to employ a reactive hook. And in this case, we have two options with the first one being the effect hook so basically in this case we are using effect which again we're importing from angular core and then inside of here we have a method which we are running and inside of that method we're saying console log and then we're outputting the name signal so again we're using the parenthesis here to output the value of the signal and the way this works is that effect will detect 
that we want to react to any changes to the name signal. So underneath here, we can actually add another log. So let's just say console log. And in this case, we will add our age as well. And now we will save that. And now we will go back into our project. And as you can see in here, every single time I change either the name or the age, I get an output. Now, this essentially means that every single time I change either the name or the age, this will output both. But what if we want to output the name and the age separately? Now, to do that, we would need to remove one of them from our hook. And now we can save that. And as you can see right now, when I change the name, I can clearly see the output right here. But when I change the age, nothing happens. This happens because my effect hook automatically detects that I'm using my name signal here to output its value. And basically, it considers this a tracked dependency. So basically, whenever you use a signal within your effect hook, it automatically becomes a tracked dependency. However, let's say we want to output both the name and the age inside of our hook. However, we do not want to react to changes to the age. So basically, whenever I change the name, I want to see both the name and the age. But when I change the age here, I don't want to see an output. Now to do that, we can just simply say untracked. So we can just say untracked like so. And then we can output the age. So basically, in this case, untracked tells Angular that I do not want to track any signals within this part of the code. So essentially, even if I use age in here to output the age, it will not track the age. This means that any changes to the age will not prompt this effect to rerun. However, any changes to the name will essentially re-render this output. So basically, let's go back here and let's actually save this. And now if I change the name, as you can see, I can see both the name and the age. But if I change the age, nothing happens. Again, if I change the name, I can see both. But if I change the age, nothing happens. So essentially, Untracked allows us to use signals within our hooks without considering them as a dependency. And basically, this allows us to not react to changes to those hooks. So again, if you want to track the changes to a signal and react to them, you will need to add that signal directly into your effect hook. However, if you want to use the signal without making it a dependency of your effect hook, so basically, if you don't want to react to changes to that signal, you will need to place it within Untracked. Now, another important thing to mention is that we're not allowed to write signals within our effect hook. So basically, in this case, if I were to do something like this, so if I were to set the content of the name signal to Jane inside of my effect hook, this would output an error like this, stating that I'm not allowed to write signals within computed and effect. So basically, in this case, if I want to overcome this restriction, I would again need to use untracked to basically place the set method within the untracked function. So in this case, as you can see, this works perfectly well. Now here I get two outputs, because essentially here I'm already tracking name. So essentially, by using name up here, I made this a track dependency. And since I'm changing the name down here, this will cause another effect to trigger. So basically, here I'm outputting the name, and then I'm outputting the age, and then an other effect triggers. And then I'm outputting the new name, which I st uh, set down here. And then I'm outputting the age again. Now, in fact, to make this a little bit less confusing, we're gonna set the age as well. So we're gonna set the age to 31. And we're gonna save that. And as you can see, the first cycle finishes before the next cycle starts. So again, the reason why we're getting two outputs is because we're setting the name here to something different. 
and this causes a new effect to run. Now, I will have to warn you that setting the name a second time in here would be an extremely bad idea because if we actually try doing that, and if we set it to something else like Josh, and if we saved that, that would actually cause an infinite loop, which I absolutely do not recommend. So now with that out of the way, we know how effect and untracked works. Now another useful hook which we can utilize is computed. Now computed is a method which allows us to immediately react to any changes in our signals. And then we can do operations on the values of our signals. So let's go down here and let's create a new signal. And we're going to be calling it computed age, computed age like so and basically this will be an instance of computed like this and now inside of here we want to say uh, return this dot age and we're going to be multiplying the age by seven actually so we want the age in dog years so basically now we can save that and actually before we do that this will be of type signal and this will be basically a number. And now we can save that. And now we want to output the age of the user in dog years. Now to do that, let's go back in here and let's get rid of this code. And let's actually create this string right here. So we want to output the name, the age and the age in dog years. And now we can save that and we can go back into our website and in here, as you can see, we have the name, the age and the age in dog years. So this works perfectly well. Now, all of the rules which apply to effect also apply to computed. This means that any changes to any signals within this method will cause this method to run again. So in this case, since we're using age here, if age changes, this will essentially cause this method to run again and this means that computed will be recalculated so if we go back into our project as you can see here if i change the age as you can see the age has been recalculated as well so basically the idea behind computed is that you can essentially use it to uh, run specific code based on changes to your signals. So in essence, this is just a more convenient way of building and rebuilding signals by reacting to changes in other signals. In fact, I could create a new signal up here and call it multiplier. And then instead of seven, we could just say this dot multiplier. And then any changes to multiplier would cause the computed age to be recalculated again. Now, with that said, I want to highlight that computed returns a signal and not a writable signal. This means that you cannot do something like this dot computed age dot set because signal does not have a setter. If you want to be able to set your signals, they have to be writable signals instead of plain signals like this. And on that note, we've covered all of the basics of signals. Now, in general, signals are an incredibly powerful state management tool, which allows you to easily optimize and organize your project. Now, in the future, I expect more and more projects to adopt signals, and I will be doing the exact same thing. On top of that, I wanted to mention once again that signals are not a replacement for observables. In fact, I would recommend using signals alongside with observables to achieve optimal results and to keep your code as clean as possible. In future videos, I'm going to be discussing this subject and I'm going to be demonstrating more uses for both signals and observables. Having that said, I hope you found this video useful and if so, make sure to like, comment and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.